Yeah, I remember. <laughs> You've probably heard of the blizzard here in Ohio of 1978. I was in that. The blizzard of 1978. 30 foot snow drifts. I'd woke up, I'm just making sure there's wait one, make sure the door's closed. Uh, I woke up in the morning. I was 15 years old. When I woke up, I could tell the sun was up. And I thought, oh my God, mom's overslept. You know, I'm uh, missing school. I was a freshman in high school. Anyway, I hear my dad get up, and he's upset because, you know, he, he's missing work. So he complains to mom, you should have woke me up. And then they realize that the power is off. Now, I'm still in bed. My curtains are pulled, but I can tell the sun's up. It's a dull white, if that's a little hint. Anyway, I'm still, you know, uh, the... the Back then, I think it was Tony Sands, he was a meteorologist, and he predicted snow showers. Anyway, I hear Dad get up, and he gets to the kitchen door. I'll never forget what he's, I'll never forget what my dad said. Quote, holy shit. It, the snow was so high, it was above our doors, it was above my window, I pulled back my curtain. You couldn't see outside. Dad got a plate, to a makeshift shovel, and basically started shoveling out to the car. It took him forever to get to the car. I mean, it, you can give me tornadoes any day. I will take a tornado outbreak any day over a blizzard. Windy, you could see the trees shake. It was it was miserable to be outside. I didn't go outside, but you could feel the wind coming in. We were feeling sorry for Dad. He had to get to the car, pop the hood, and take the car battery out. Now, in those days, the CB radio was very, very, very popular. He brought the car battery in and hooked it to the CB. A uh, CB in those days would run about a week on a battery. So we had enough communication with the outside world with the outside world for probably a week, maybe more. Of course, when you're hooking something like that up, you gotta double make sure the polarity's correct, or you burn them up. But anyway, we had no power. It's very dangerous feel. No way to get to the doctor or hospital if you had a medical emergency. Being in the blizzard is a very scary and dangerous thing. Horrifying. Very hor. I think it was like three or four days a four-wheeler finally come out and knocked on our door. But you can, you can give me another April 3rd, 1974 tornado outbreak any day. And that's horrifying and scary. But that blizzard of 1978... That was horrifying. Very scary. If I remember correctly, we had no school for, I think, a month. I forget how long we had no power. I know it was several days. It just, oh, I would, I would lay in bed before the sun would go down. And I'd, look, I'd watch the trees blown in the wind, 35 mile an hour winds. It's horrifying. I would rather have it 110 degrees in the shade, to be honest about it. And in cold like that is very painful. Very painful. Of course, you know, we didn't go outside at all. But every time that door was open, which we didn't open much, but when Dad went to get to the battery of his car, when, you know, Mom, we didn't want to close the door on him in case he had to come back. You know, we, you know, he would be knocking, but it just, we, he could, you know, anybody could pass out. 
He, he could have got too cold where he couldn't move. So we kept the door open for his safety. You know, we, we just wanted to make sure, keep an eye on him. If he got in trouble, it'd been nothing we could have done. Goshen, Ohio. Goshen, Ohio was buried. Loveland, Ohio was buried in snow. We had a Loveland address. We lived about seven miles inside of Loveland. It was the most horrifying thing you could ever experience. Oh, that, that was a lot of snow. I never will forget that blizzard. Most, I mean, it just, I would rather have a gun stuck to my head, to be honest about it. Because you're dead anyway, you, you know, it just, it just a 